it's time to learn how to quilt an easy, fun, super spooky spider web. Come and join me. The basic framework for our spider web free motion quilting is a spiral. Now this is a shape that we use a lot in free motion quilting. You can start in the center and work your way out, or you can start in the outside and work your way in. For these spider webs, I find it most helpful to work from the inside out. So I just start in the center and work my way out. You can make your spirals as many layers as you would like. I generally like to stop when I have about two lines of my spiral at any radius. So starting from the center out, if I draw, I wanna hit two lines. You can draw it more elaborately, but it will become a little bit more complicated to quilt when we transform these into spider webs. Once you have one spiral, we need to actually fill the space with spirals. So we need to connect this one to the next one. And I do that by drawing an arc from my endpoint to an unquilted area. And then I start again, working from the center out. Your lines are gonna cross and that is totally okay. I draw about a similar size spiral, but again, we're gonna be using these to make spider webs in the next step. So spider webs are not all the same. It is okay if they are all a little bit wonky and different sized, cause that's how spider webs look in nature. So don't get too caught up on making your spirals or spider webs exactly the same. You can continue drawing this arc and spiral design around a piece of paper or of uh, some extra fabric that you have to get the idea of how to fill our area with this spider web design. Now, these are spirals, they're not spider webs yet. And if you're not into spider webs, then this would be a great design in itself. You could stop here and do this all over a quilt and it would look fantastic. But we're gonna take this concept one step further and change these into spider webs. So here's our spiral framework that we've been working with. We're not actually going to quilt the spiral. We are going to imagine it on our fabric. If it would help you to take a water soluble marker and draw this on your fabric, then that might be a great way to get started. I usually just kind of eyeball what I think a spiral would look like in that space. Now to get to our spider web, we're gonna start in the center of our spiral and make little arcs along that imagined or drawn spiral. You can start with them being a little bit smaller and then getting a little bit bigger towards this outside. Now we still have our spiral here, but once we remove that, and it may not have been there at all in the first place, you can see that we have this nice spider web design. Now joining these spider webs together is exactly the same as the spirals. You're going to draw that same arc and then spider web your way out from the center. And you're gonna continue that arc spider web all over your quilt. Arc and then spider web. Arc and spider web. Now spider webs can be bent or echoed around however you need to use them to fill your space. So let's create a little hole for ourselves to fill. And let's say we have another spider web up here and another one over here. So we are here right now, and we have realized that we have left this space down here to fill. So we need to work our way back in there and solve that problem and then get back out to this unquilted area over here. I'm going to just make a sharp turn and echo this arc right here. See how this is kind of a similar arc? And then I'm gonna make another arc to get to the middle and then spider web my way around and then I can arc my way around here kind of echoing this line. So these lines 
echo this spider web right here. So they look like they fit into this design, even though it probably would have been better if I had gone from this spider web and arced here and then this spider web and then worked over here and worked in a little bit more organized way. It's totally fine to jump back in and fill in holes. Even if you can't fit a big spider web, let's say that this area was even smaller. Let's say we had another spider web that was coming in here. So we only had this weird little space. We could do the same feel. We could echo this same part of our previous spider web echo in and we still have to fill the space a little bit. Let's just do a little weird echo. We're going to echo in this way to echo this line and then we're going to add a little bit more to this spider web by echoing this line and now we're pretty full so let's just get out of here. And now we can continue. Now if this was all black and viewed from a distance you would never really notice that this part wasn't meant to be. It's the same shape lines, it's the same feel, it's the same arcs, it will totally blend together. So if you find yourself with little holes, just go back in and fill them in as best you can. And remember that it's a spider web. It can be whatever you want it to be. <laughs> So if you want to take the time to do some drawing on this design and create some problems for yourself and then figure out a way to get in there and quilt it and get back out, that's really great practice for free motion quilting. And then when we get to the stitching part, when you're actually working on a quilt, then it's just one less thing you have to figure out while your hands are moving and your machine is stitching. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a little sample fabric and let's stitch this up. Here I am working my way around this little sample of black fabric. I'm using white thread for contrast and because I thought it would be cute for spider webs. I bring my bobbin thread up to the surface of my quilt when I am quilting. That allows me to avoid any little nests on the back of my quilt as the bobbin thread gets a little messy. It uh, also allows me to have two options for dealing with those thread ends. I pull on the bobbin and the top thread to give me a long tail. I can thread that onto a needle and bury it in the surface of the quilt, in the, in the batting of the quilt. Or I can take a few small stitches when I am starting my line of free motion quilting and then I can clip those ends off at the surface of my quilt. Those tiny stitches will be enough to secure it. You can also see I am pausing during my quilting quite a bit. This design is so beginner friendly because there are so many places to stop and pause and rearrange your hands or take a breath or decide where you need to go next. In designs with a lot of long, smooth curves, it can be difficult to start uh, and stop because each little pause will create a little bit of a bobble in that smooth arc. But our spider webs are full of points, so we can get to a point in our spider web, pause, and begin again, and that bobble in the arc or our little tiny stitches as we get started will be completely hidden. So. Don't be afraid to stop and pause and look around at your quilt. You could even break thread and pull the whole thing out from under your machine and spread it out to really get a sense of how you are. And then you can start back up and no one will ever really be able to tell. As usual, I've sped up this video just a little bit. My usual quilting speed on my domestic machine is pretty slow. So I'm going to show you in real time what this looked like. Definitely don't be afraid to take your quilting as slow as you need to to feel confident. It's not a race. I know a lot of people are super speedy. I am not one of them and it's okay. No one will ever know when they look at my quilting on the quilt. So here are my little spider webs all stitched out. You can see that my spider webs are not uniformly sized. I have some larger spider webs and some smaller spider webs that all fit together to fill the space. So don't worry about trying to keep them all the same size because it looks great when they're not. You can see I had a few areas where I crossed over my design. I finished this spider web and was in this little bit of a corner between these three spider webs here. So I just turned around and arced out and started another spider web. And that is the way you move around this design. Don't be afraid to cross over your lines or have a really long echo around another spider web. 
whatever you need to do to move around, it will all flow together just fine once you're all done. I've stitched this with white thread on black fabric, which I think is super cute for a Halloween design. But if you're looking for more of a matching look, I did use black in my bobbin so you could see how it looks and it's not picking it up at all. Let's see. There we go. You can see that it just becomes a texture when you are using matching thread on matching fabric. If this was a pieced quilt, you would pick just the color you think that would blend best across the surface of your quilt. I think for a Halloween quilt, it's likely gonna be like a dark gray. <laughs> I do have one variation I want to walk you guys through. It's something that I did on a quilt of mine that I quilted ages ago. I added tiny little spiders that were dripping down, hanging down from the spider webs. I thought that they were really cute, not at all like real spiders, but they added a little bit of interest to the quilt. Let's add some tiny spiders to our spider webs. Adding spiders doesn't change the shape of our spider web at all. We're gonna make the same shape, but we're gonna pause at a point, at the tip of one of these little arcs. Now I find it most comfortable to draw my spiders dangling down towards me, but you can stitch these in any direction you would like. And it may be best to stitch these in a variety of directions, or if you're like me and you need to stitch them one way, uh, rotate your quilt so that they are dangling in different ways. If you want a non-directional all over. If you don't mind there being a direction, then you can stitch them all the same way and they'll all be hanging down the same the same way. So once we're to a point, you're going to stitch a line straight down from your spider web. And there are two different ways to make our little spiders and you can mix and match if you would like. The first one is just to make teeny little legs and then go out the other way and then stitch right back up along that line. And then you can continue your spider web. And it's like a little spider without a central body. The other way to do it is to stitch down, stitch a little circle, and then come back and add legs off of it. There is a little bit more stitching over your lines in this method, and then we'll stitch right back up, and then we can continue. So there is more over stitching in our little spider with a guy here. Now, take your time. It's very small segments. There's no rush. And if you're using matching thread, then any little bobbles, I don't know, you can just call them little spider hair or little decorations. But on my quilt, they're not perfect and nobody has ever noticed. They just think, what a cute spider. And when you're doing these legs, you can even intentionally not trace back and do little pointy legs if you would like. It's a little bit harder to get all eight of them in there, but I'm pretty sure that some of my spiders on my quilt only have six legs because I ran out of room. <laughs> and again, it's fine. So as we begin to quilt our little spider, I make my normal spider web until I reach a point where there will be some area to dangle down from. I stitch my line, my little circle, and my little legs. Now, I did manage to squeeze in eight here, but if you could only get in six, I don't think anyone's ever gonna notice. So after I'm done with the spider, I just continue spider webbing around until I have finished my design. And then I would proceed as normal, just bounce out and continue the next. So here's my tiny little spider. He turned out really cute. Now you can see that my stitching on this is not perfect, but from a distance, even in the contrasting thread, it looks really adorable. Now in the matching thread, he really blends in, but still adorable, I gotta say. I'm a big fan of quilted spiders. <laughs> I do have one other little variation if you are really into the spider webs. I'm a big Charlotte's Web fan. It was one of my favorite books growing up. And on my quilt, I wrote some pig in one of the spider webs that I quilted on the quilt. There are different style of spider webs, but you can absolutely do the same thing with this style. But it's just gonna take a little bit more overstitching. 
You might want a little bit of a bigger spider web to work with here, but I would stitch the whole thing. I might even come back and add the lettering at the end. It will cause a few more thread breaks and you might have to bury some more ends, but it's easier to stitch these letters onto spider webs that are already existing. So I would find a spider web with a nice big space and just fill in the letters as best you can. The E is one of the hardest. All right, add a little bit there. This is one of those times where a water soluble marker will be your friend because you can write and see how you want those letters to connect to your spider web and make sure that it's readable before you stitch it down. I like having these little angular letters because they're a little bit more uh, traditional for the book, but if you wanted to do something more round than no one is stopping you as it's your quilt. Now, is this super readable? I don't know, but I know it's there and I love it. So if you want to add something like this, then definitely go for it because it makes me chuckle every time I look at that quilt. <laughs> So here I am working back into that same spider web where I made our spider, and there is no exact science to this. If you pre-mark it, it will go a little easier, but I'm just trying to attach the letters where they land on my spider web. And then once I finish the sum, then I kind of trace around my spider web until I get to the bottom to do the pig. And I end up doing the letters for pig in reverse order because that's where I come to them. But if you wanted to break thread there and start with the P for pig, then it might make it a little bit easier. So here's our funny little sum pig. It is not the most legible thing. I think if you didn't know it was there, <laughs> It would probably just look like a mess, but I know it's there. It makes me really happy. And if you are a Charlotte's Web fan, then um, it's a nice little Easter egg on a quilt to find every once in a while. Do keep in mind it will be backwards on the other side of the quilt. So like all lettering on quilts, it's not going to be quite as readable on the back side. So there's our little spiderweb free motion quilting design. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is one of my go-to designs for Halloween quilts. I think it's adorable, it's really easy to do, and it's really easy to do on a regular sewing machine because you are working in these nice small little clusters and it's a repetitive, easy movement that you already know. So if you can imagine that spiral layout and get that method and way of moving around a quilt down pat, then spider webs will be super easy. Now, if you want more free motion quilting, then there is a playlist popping up that has all of my other free motion quilting designs. Um, some of them are on the regular sewing machine, some of them are on the long arm, but you can do either on both machines. So don't let that hold you back if you see one on the other. And I will be back in about a week with another video. Until then, happy quilting.